Okay, so um, I mean, we start smart. We're going to talk a little bit about smart water meters and and how the water companies can maybe improve uptake of those. How they can communicate better. I I guess the starting point would be to acknowledge that they are. I don't know whether we call them a marmite topic or you know, everyone seems to have a quite a strong view about smart water meters, whether they're for or against them. Is, is that fair to say they they do sort of divide opinion? Absolutely. Um, I think. You know, when you look at you look at the, how the energy sectors rolled them out, um, I think it is <clears throat> very much a, a mistrust there. I think around around um, public opinion, but I also think that there, there's strong advocates. You know, with the um, the cost of living crisis, I think certainly within the energy sector, um, people have used the, the smart meters as a as a tool to be able to manage costs, etc. You know, and there'll be, you'll find strong advocates of that. But yeah, it, it absolutely does does divide uh, opinion. And the, I mean, the water industry clearly has embarked on a program of inst installation. Um, but is it fair to say that they haven't got as far along with that program as they would like to because of this, the, the, the negative view that quite a lot of people have? Is that reasonable to say that? Um, I, 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 that certainly there's a cynicism around it. Um, I, I think um, that there is, there's a number of reasons uh, why... I mean, it, currently, I think there's only 13% of water customers currently on uh, using uh, smart meters. Um, so the adoption is, is very, very, very low at the moment, um, where they've got, also, they've got targets of around 48% by 2030, and we're in 2024 now. So I think that that's deeply concerning about where where they are um, in that, and I, I I personally would expect them to, um, to 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 be at least double that really if if the objective is is say fifty percent by just under fifty percent by uh, by twenty thirty. I mean, and is the I mean, is the acknowledged or unacknowledged end goal universal smart water meeting? Is that where they want to get at some stage in the future? As you say, by 2030 they're looking for you know somewhere near 50 percent 40 50 percent adoption but add on another 20 years would they hope that every business every uh domestic household has has a smart water meter do you think that's that that's what the ideal scenario certainly is? that's the objective i think by the time they get to 2050 then then absolutely but you know the reality is i, I think they need to get there a lot quicker sooner because when you you look at water companies um i mean obviously they're investing billions and billions into infrastructure etc but one of the levers they've got um to to influence water consumption it is smart meters it absolutely is so if they can increase that adoption then they've got a chance of being able to influence customer consumption which which takes pressure pressure off so personally if i was a water company i'd be absolutely making this one of my 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 short to medium term aims um because like i say you, those those billions of pounds infrastructure projects are going to take a lot of time 10 years 15 years 20 years to come on where you know uh having a lever like smart meter to influence consumption can affect things right right now you know uh that that's my view okay so um so what what's going wrong in in you know that's a, a simple question i suspect there's quite a lot of complexity when it comes to the answer um you've, you've obviously hinted there that they may be you know not focusing on it as much as they should but um i'm are they struggling to get through to customers when they do try and explain you know, just yeah, what 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 are they doing wrong, or what could they improve? I suppose. I think you know if you look at the the, the water sector as it is, I think there's there's a number of things that I, I personally think uh, you know coming at it from a I suppose being a customer communications expert uh, and having experience of of working across different verticals, 
Um, I personally think the way they communicate with the customers uh, is, is done in a very generic way, uh, one size fits all. And if you're going to try and influence customers, certainly to, to uptake smart meters, as I've seen across all other verses, you have to start talking to the individual. Uh, you you can no longer uh, preach to, to, to customers, say, it's the right thing to do, be a good citizen. I think that's probably got them so far and probably explains why the 13, um, 13% uptake uh, is. But I think, you what you know, most, most individuals uh it's what's in it for me and i think there's a real cynicism obviously the the, lot of bad plug but bad publicity right now around water it just seems every time there's any way uh, that the press can hammer water companies they do so and obviously that that's obviously going to have a a reflecting in in general public's view uh so when you come in and mandate, say, smart meters are, are great, you can save 14% uh, of your costs if you if you take a smart meter. I d- don't think a lot of people believe that. Um, the, I think there's a lot of perception around customers about they really don't know. Uh, they, they don't know um, what their usage is. Uh, I think the average usage per person is about 152 liters a day that they use and i don't think say i think research says that 94 percent of people don't don't know that um so when you you know when you start to um look at the way uh smart meters can be adoptions from the angle i come you have to speak to the customer so if you've got a uh someone who's retired that lives on their own what's the benefit there if you're a single mother with two children what's the benefit if you're living like myself, a household, you know, uh, two, two, two children, family, you know, what what is the benefit? And you have to start speaking uh, to 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 clients in that way. And what I've seen is, is say you get most most customers get uh, a a bill, which is the main commun- main form of communications that water companies have, and. Uh, They'll send a bill, and then and then aside of that, you'll get you'll get a whole package of information. Some of it will be smart, and all the rest of it. Effectively, you get your bill because that's what I want to pay, and then you've got five or six other items, and that just ends up going in the recycling bin because it's not actually talking to you, the individual. It's not built into the communication, and I think using the bill firstly as uh because that's the main communication point but then using the bill to to advocate smart meters and to personalize that and taking data and reasons and what what is the benefit uh for that individual it's got to be the way to go now it's not going to it's it, it's not a magic wand but if you can start to nudge up uh the adoption by another 10, 15, 20% through the personalizations of communications, then you start to have a huge impact. That's a massive impact. Um, um, so I think that's what the, you know, I think they, they're not using uh, a lever that they've got particularly particularly well at all. And, I, and from the angle I'm, I, I see, see things is, if they were just to adopt and start to talk to individual personas, individuals, then they'll have a lot more, a lot more, a lot more impact. Once you've actually then got customers on board, um, you know, they become smart meter customers, then you can really improve the customer experience because there's real rich data. You can start to actually make specific recommendations to households about how they should be um how, how they should be using the water how they can make better use of it you you can provide information around um leakage be it internal like a toilet flush that's constantly running you can identify that in the data quite quickly external leaks and and you can 
you can really start to add value um, about, about that. Um, I think also one of the other challenges uh, that they have around smart meter adoption is the fact that when they're talking to uh, the individuals, generally the bill payer. So in my household, there's four people, but I, 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 get, the, I get the bill. Um, but my, my children are very interested in consumption and how they, uh, how they can make better use of water, et cetera. So why not communicate with them as well? That, that data is available. You don't necessarily have to, you don't have to necessarily send them a bill because they're not going to be very interested, but they'd be certainly interested in information about our household and about how they could better, better reduce the, the, the consumption. And they're more likely to influence my behaviour, if I'm being quite honest. Yeah, and I mean, do you think alongside that there is still the case for a more general sort of education around the fact that i mean clearly when it rains every day during the winter you've got a job to explain to people that we're running out of water but the reality does seem to be that with the drier summers etc at some point you know we we are going to be significantly short you know the quotes as to sometimes we you know we got less water than parts of spain or you know Mediterranean country do, do you think that still needs to be preached so that people do eventually get this message that they can't just expect to turn on the tap the shower forever and ever and just get it that, that there is a finite resource that does need better management of? absolutely I do uh, I mean water aid have, have been quoted saying that you know in the UK we're at a real risk of of basically going back to the I can just remember the 1970s, the standpipes. I, I live in Kent myself, and I've seen a number of areas in Kent and Sussex that have actually had their water turned off for a number of weeks because the water levels were so low last summer that they were unable to pump, pump the water to certain areas. So it's happening today. Uh, the threat is really, really real, and consumers are going to start to see that instances of that more and more so um and without really influencing that behavior on consumption immediately we're just going to see that problem exac exacerbated we're also seeing obviously through the pandemic there's been a huge shift in people working from home so water usage in the household has come up so um you, you've got um You've got a couple of things that are going on. One, climate change, which we all know now is very real, and the so seen examples of that, and water usage is, is going up. Um, so, yeah, I think the problem is is really real. And, um, and I think, you know, smart meters certainly can play a part in, in taking some of that pressure away. And also, I mean, to be fair to the water companies, uh, do you think it, it potentially requires something at a government level? Because obviously the water companies, as you say, there's a lot of cynicism. So people are thinking, well, my bills are going up. You know, we know about all the pollution in rivers and seas, clearly not quite related to smart meters directly. But there's that over. So does it need government to, to say to us all, you know, we need to change our behavior, whereas the minute the water companies tell us that we kind of think well hang about why are they telling us that you know what's what's their agenda kind of thing whereas if government's telling us you know by 2050 if we don't do something you know you ain't going to be able to do what you know whatever however dramatic they want to be it just needs that extra level of of emphasis as to how potentially you know disastrous this situation will, will be well, I mean, the government's got a couple of levers. I suppose the first one is a political one where they can just mandate it because they put, they've obviously placed placed the problem with the water providers to to be able to influence customers um, to do that, which we talked about, and they're not, in my view, not doing a, a very very good job of that right now or an effective job I, I, I should say of doing that right now and there are a number of reasons like that rollout etc cetera, etc cetera, uh in fairness um but yeah i think if the government could mandate them uh but 
politically. I'm not so sure they they will because they've already kind of. I think if they were going to do that, they would have done that already. And I, I don't know if that's a vote winner or not. But to your point, I think uh, the government could look to to influence through ca campaigns. But again, if it's just been about being a good citizen or whatever, I just don't see that washing. I think, again, it has to be, you know, what? how's that going to impact the individual? And, and, and some of it, I guess, will be needed to be targeted by, by region because we all know in East Anglia, in Kent and Sussex and, and other areas, sort of the drier counties, the pressure is real and the pressure is right now. Whereas, um, you know, maybe someone in North Wales that might say, well, actually, this is, I don't get it. Because, I, you know, I, I, um, so, you, it, again, I think that that message, if the government is going to start to, to, uh, to take part in that, the message in the campaigns have to be quite quite specific or it, it, it's, it's it's not going to get the desired results and, and just one other thought as well i mean the, the youngsters um seem to be more in tune with with these kind of issues uh, and I, to be fair i think the water companies you already have various initiatives around it you know at going into schools and stuff like that do you think that's an error as well because i mean anyone under say if we're looking at 2050 we've got 25 years so anyone under a certain age they may or may not obviously be able to afford to buy a house or something. But if you get them early to understand it, is that another way of hopefully improving the uptake? Maybe not, you know, in the next immediate future, but over the next, you know, 10 to 15 years, at least as a lot of these start owning or, you know, renting a house where, you know, water consumption will, will you know, be part of their bill paying or whatever. Firstly, I think it's an excellent idea uh, that the water companies are engaging with schools. Etc. I think that's brilliant. Um, so I think that's the that's, that's a really good first step. But then again, back to the point we were discussing earlier, how can you empower those uh, those uh, school children to actually have an impact? Well, it's ultimately consumption is about behaviour. So it's it's a, again understanding how how you is playing a part in that so what is that? that that i suppose that's your household that you live in today so i think it'd be a fantastic idea is to start providing this data household data not just to the bill payer but start to target the household itself now it could be that you target the bill payer to enable the family to opt in. So you could opt your children in so they can start to see the data. That, that could be one way of doing it. Um, but I do think being able to share that information um, and really sort of uh, uh, get, get children to opt into that, see that, and I think, I think that will really influence the behaviour and the consumption uh, within the household. So I think first step, fantastic awareness what can i do about it give give the children the information around consumption and i'm sure i'm sure they'll start to they'll start to influence things okay so i mean in, to summarize the water companies need to pull their socks up are you optimistic that they they will do so or do, do you worry that you know as you outlined maybe at least at the start of the conversation that they sort of have a certain way or they're set slightly set in their ways and maybe not ready to change but so how, how do you bring about that change i suppose would be the the, the question i'm quite optimistic um I, from the conversations uh i've had generally uh with water companies um they absolutely understand um <laughs> it's a key objective and, and they're definitely waking up to that so i think that's good news. Um, and I think from the conversations I've also had around really targeting messaging, really making the communications that they're sending to clients work much harder for them. Uh, I, I think there's definitely an acknowledgement. It's something they're not doing, have done previously particularly well. 
but they definitely see it as a as a vehicle to support that. So with myself getting involved in some really interesting discussions around uh, how, how to do that. Uh, so yeah, I, I am optimistic. Whether whether I feel they can hit the goal of forty eight percent by twenty thirty, I'm not so sure. Uh, I think outside of that, there's a number of challenges around the infrastructure, etc. Um, some are doing it. Some are actually quite a way down the road. So there are some examples of that, and some aren't. Um, so yeah, I think I, I it is achievable, but I think. You know, from my perspective, that need to really start to, to to ramping up the activities about the, the way they communicate with clients. Okay, it's been great to chat, Alan. Some great food for thought there. Um, so enjoyed it. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you.